Hey, STEAM team, and welcome to week three of Candy Science. Last week, we learned about super saturated solutions and how to grow our own rock candy by creating one of these solutions ourselves using sugar and water. If you haven't seen that one yet, go back and check it out because it's a super fun activity. For those of you who did take part in that one, have you been checking on your rock candy? Do you see any sugar crystals growing bigger yet? Next week, we'll be taking a look at how our rock candy turned out. But for this week, we'll be doing something a little different. Today, we are building a strand of DNA out of candy. And it's going to look something like this. DNA is a pretty complex subject. So let's start off with some basics. What is DNA and why might we want to learn about it? DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, and it's made up of molecules called nucleotides. You may have heard that your body is made up of millions, or actually trillions, of tiny cells. These cells are the building blocks of life, and within the nucleus of each cell is DNA. The DNA tells the rest of the cell what to do. It's kind of like the boss of the cell. For example, it might tell the cells how to make certain proteins and when and what they should look like. Each person's DNA is also what makes us different from each other as it helps to determine things like our eye color, hair color, height, personality, and so on. Well, let's see what we will need for this activity and then we'll go into more detail about the different parts of a strand of DNA as we move through the steps. To build one strand of DNA for this activity, you will need two Twizzlers or any type of licorice, although Twizzlers are probably the most bendy and you'll see why this is important later on. One package of soft candy in four different colors. For example, gummy bears or gumdrops. I'm using gummy bears today. Four cups or bowls to separate your candies by color. Some toothpicks. And a pen or sharpie and some tape for labeling. You may also want a sheet of paper and some colorful markers or pencil crayons for at the end of this activity. Just one note before starting this activity. The toothpicks are very sharp and pointy. Please be cautious as you poke them through the candies. And if you're having any trouble, ask an adult for help. Now let's move on to the step. Remember how we talked a little earlier about nucleotides, the molecules that make up DNA? Each nucleotide contains three things. A phosphate group, a sugar group, and a nitrogen base. There are four different types of nitrogen bases, adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, or we could also refer to them as A, T, C, and G. So step one is to sort our colored candies or gummies into four different colors, which will represent the four different nitrogen bases. Step one is to sort our gummies into four different colors as they will represent the four different nitrogen bases that make up DNA. Take your four cups or bowls, choose four colors of your candy, and sort them between the cups. You can choose any colors you like for each nucleotide. Just be sure to label the cups or bowls so that you know which ones are which. I'm going to choose adenine to be yellow, thymine to be green, cytosine to be orange, and guanine to be red. Now here's something important to keep in mind. Even though the exact pattern or the order of the nitrogen bases varies, so it always changes, the bases always show up in certain pairs. Adenine and thymine are always paired together and cytosine and guanine are always paired together. So we will be following these pairings as we build our DNA strand. Step two, now it's time to make up pairs of our nitrogen bases, AKA our colored candies or gummies. 
Start making pairs now by carefully sliding each of your paired gummies onto the middle of a toothpick and then set them aside, as you can see that I'm doing here. Remember, adenine and thymine are paired together and cytosine and guanine are paired together. I made five toothpicks for each pairing, so 10 total. And that should be just enough, as you will need eight to 10 toothpicks to fill your strand of DNA. Three is to attach the paired nitrogen bases, or our toothpicks, to their backbone. The backbone gives the DNA its shape and holds together the nucleotides. Lay out your two Twizzlers, then take one toothpick at a time that has the paired gummies on it and attach it to the Twizzlers on both sides. Be careful not to touch the pointy ends of the toothpicks as you poke them through. You'll want to poke them through just a little bit, but not too far. Just enough that they are going to stay put in the licorice. Keep going with your toothpicks until you have used up all your candy or there's no room left to add more. The shape should look a bit like a ladder. Also, this is the part where the DNA gains its unique blueprint. So be as creative as you like in the ordering of your nitrogen bases. It's totally up to you what order you want to put them in. You can choose to switch between different colored gummies or bases, or repeat the same ones, or a bit of both. And the paired bases can be flipped also. Step four is the final step. Hold on to both ends of your DNA strand and twist it gently once or twice so that it forms what is called a double helix. A double helix is the typical structure of DNA. It kind of looks like a twisted ladder or a spiral staircase is how some describe it. When DNA wants to replicate or make a copy of itself, it will unwind to allow the copying of the nucleotides to happen. Then it will wind once again into the double helix. Okay, for step five, this one is optional, but it's pretty cool because you get to see the unique code of DNA that you have made. You can end this activity by laying out your DNA on a sheet of paper and labeling each of the nitrogen bases next to your strand as either A, T, C, or G based on the colors that you chose for each one. Here you can see that I'm labeling first all of the A's, all of the adenines, and then thymine, cytosine, and guanine. So if you read the letters down each side of your DNA, this is the unique code that you created. You just created your very own strand of DNA and a DNA code. Congratulations. Step six, once you're done admiring your strand of DNA, if you'd like to, don't forget to enjoy this treat. All right, it is remix time. The DNA we just made is a fun, educational treat. But if you don't happen to have these candies on hand today, or if you would like to build a strand of DNA that you can keep for longer, there are many other ways that you can do this. Here's some ideas. How about try building some DNA out of Lego blocks? You can do this by choosing four colors of Lego. These four colors are going to represent the four nitrogen bases that we talked about. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And remember that adenine and thymine are paired together, and cytosine and guanine are paired together. So you can build the tower only with these four colors, and also with those certain colored blocks paired together. So challenge yourself to see what you can build out of this. 
you could build a shorter and wider tower, or you could build a taller and thinner one. Some other ways that you can make models of DNA could be by using marshmallows and toothpicks, clay and toothpicks, perhaps pipe cleaners in different colors, or you could use beads and string. Now before we go, let's talk about a real world connection. At the beginning of this video, we mentioned that DNA is what helps to determine our uniqueness as people. We could also say that it helps to determine our genetics or genes. DNA biologically links us to our ancestors and our family members, such as our parents, grandparents, siblings, cousins, aunts and uncles. An interesting fact is to do with twins. You may have heard that there's two different types of twins. One type of twins, called identical twins, have virtually the exact same DNA, which is why they often look so alike. On the other hand, fraternal twins, although also born at the same time, have different DNA codes. Therefore, they are no more alike than siblings, and they can actually look quite different from one another. Think about yourself, your family, or someone that you know. What are some unique things that you see that may be due to DNA? So today we learned what DNA is, its role in the cells of our bodies, and the different parts that make up a strand of DNA, also constructing one ourselves. Next Tuesday is the final day of candy science, and we will be learning about soil layers while putting together some yummy worms and dirt cups. We will also revisit our rock candy next week and see how our sugar crystals have grown and if it's ready to finally enjoy. I'm sure looking forward to it, and I hope that you are too. See you then, Steam Team, and have a great week.